you who believe fasting has been prescribed upon you as an obligation just as it was prescribed for the nations and the people who came before you so that you may attain taqwa so the main point behind the fasting of Ramadan is taqwa is the achievement of taqwa and we will come to talk about the comprehensive and inclusive meaning of this beautiful term taqwa and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proceeds uh, shortly after this to say or to talk about Ramadan شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان the month of Ramadan in which the Quran was sent down it was revealed and it contains clear signs for the guidance and mercy of humanity that shows the importance of this beautiful month that is about a week away and one of the beautiful aspects of our ummah that alhamdulillah until today despite the negative things that we are experiencing as an ummah one beautiful aspect that you will see among Muslims across the globe is that they look forward anxiously for Ramadan they're happy about Ramadan they get ready for Ramadan a few weeks sometimes a couple of months before they start looking forward to it and that's a beautiful aspect of our ummah alhamdulillah we have been maintaining this and holding on to this beautifully so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless these efforts and these intentions and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us witness and live through the month of Ramadan and to make the best of it the month of Ramadan is the peak of this year and any year it's the best of all times during the year and we know that the Prophet ﷺ and his companions would take this month seriously. Ramadan is not like any other month. It's not like any other time. Ramadan is special. It's a golden opportunity for us to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The things, the beautiful and positive things that combine in Ramadan, they never combine any time else. Any time else. This is why Ramadan is so special. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it so much importance. And the act of worship that is specifically linked to the month of Ramadan is fasting, as siyam And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises this act of worship and raises its position when he says in the divine hadith, al-hadith al-Qudusi, كُلُّ عَمَلِ بْنِ آدَمَ لَهُ إِلَّا الصَّوْمِ فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِهِ all of the acts of worship, everything the son of Adam does is for him. He will reap the reward for that. Except for fasting, it is for me. Allah says it is for him alone. Fasting, there is something special, something specific about fasting that no other act of worship shares. Only fasting holds this beauty. That Allah claims that this act of worship is exclusively for Allah. Except for fasting, it is for me. And I will reward for it. And Allah didn't name any kind of reward. And when Allah doesn't name a reward, that means it is something beyond your imagination. Something beyond your expectations. And there is a secret in the fact where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fasting is for me. So Allah singles out fasting from amongst all the acts of worship that we know that Allah says it is for me and there is a reason behind this if you look at all the acts of worship prayer the prayer contains recitations adhkar and dua supplication and it includes ruku' bowing and sujood prostration it has been directed to other than Allah there are people who prostrate themselves before other than Allah there are people who bow before other than Allah throughout the ages. Zakah, there are people who give their money for the sake of other gods, for the sake of other things other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hajj, which contains tawaf and other acts of worship, a lot of them are directed to others. You'll find in certain countries where there is ignorance of the pure Islamic belief you find people making tawaf around graves 
thinking this is part of Islam, when this is polytheism, this is shirk, this is against Islam completely. So any act of worship that you can think of, 